Thank you for joining me today. Before we get started, I want to take a minute to tell you about a new app called Get Upside that we at the Rideshare Guy have been using to save up to 25 cents per gallon on gas. Pretty awesome. The app is completely free to use. All you have to do is upload your receipt after you buy gas and then cash gets added to your account. The cash adds up over time and you can deposit your funds straight to your PayPal account whenever you want. Some drivers are using GetUpside to save $50 per week just buying gas from their favorite gas stations. So now listen closely because this deal gets even better. I'm going to give you a short code that'll get you an additional $0.15 cents per gallon sign-up bonus. So you just download the GetUpside app from the App Store, open the app, and enter the promo code. It's WQ8JR. Now, another way you can get your $0.15 cent per gallon sign-up bonus is to visit the rideshareguy.com forward slash getupside app. That's G-E-T and then upside, U-P-S-I-D-E, and then app, A-P-P. Check it out. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of the Rideshare Dojo. Today's episode is Jay Reads the News, rideshare news that might impact you out there on the road. All right, we even added a little music there to the beginning. How you like that? How you like that? How are you doing out there, drivers, driving on the road, getting ready for the holidays? I'm going to do an episode just about dealing with passengers driving during the holidays because it's uh, it's a little different this month, this month of December, you know, Christmas parties and people dressing up like Santa and people happy and people sad and people drinking a little bit more, but that'll be in a different episode. Today, I've picked out six stories, six stories that I think uh, are kind of interesting uh, in the rideshare industry. So let's jump in and we're going to start with Uber Safety Push includes plans to start audio recording rides. So this is the Washington Post. It says Uber is launching an audio recording pilot in Latin America. Uber plans to record audio during rides in the United States as part of a new security communications viewed by the Washington Post. Okay, so what they're saying is they're testing this out in uh, Latin America right now, and uh, they plan to bring it to the United States. So this uh, this is uh, <laughs> interesting. So uh, I recently did a podcast where I talked about Uber's um, safety report, and I, I impressed upon uh, drivers the importance of having a dash cam as a form of protection. Well, this is uh, certainly uh, another form of protection for the driver and the passenger. So if every uh, every interaction is recorded in audio, you know, through the Uber app, uh, people are going to be on their best behavior. So what do you think of that? Does this feel a little too intrusive to you, drivers out there? What do you think? I don't know how I feel, honestly. Um, I, I, I like to uh, have a dash cam because that's in my control, and it's sort of like my choice but to have Uber force this recording upon me, this recording system, um, 
I guess I feel it's okay. I guess right now, if I just thought about it, it feels okay. I don't do anything in my car that I don't want anyone not to hear. So I've got nothing to hide. And uh, uh, for those drivers that don't have dash cams, uh, this is uh, definitely enforced safety. And uh, I think I support it. So I feel pretty good about that. But I'm curious what you guys think. But that's what's coming. That's what's coming. A little bit, little bit Big Brother, a little bit George Orwell. Uh, but it will save lives. I do believe it will save lives and it will uh, reduce the amount of uh, sexual uh, assault that occurs inside of cars. So uh, it's a small price to pay, I believe, for um, saving some lives and uh, reducing traumatic experiences. All right. Story number two. Let me see what story number two is. Uh, story number two. All right. So this guy, I don't know who this guy is. This is the Business Insider. Okay, his name is Clark Bowman. He uh, <laughs> He's like a part-time driver. And uh, I don't know why, but he gets a lot of articles published. And this one is called, I'm a driver for Uber and Lyft. Here are eight ways I can tell someone is going to be a bad passenger within five seconds. So I'm going to share with you these, and a lot of them are just so common sense that I don't know why there's an article about it, but there is. And let's go over them and see if we can all agree on this is how you know somebody's a bad uh, passenger. Okay, number one, the passenger has a rating lower than 4.6. Seems pretty obvious, Clark, that if a passenger (laughs) has a rating below 4.6, they're doing something wrong. Um, However, I have never turned down a passenger for their rating. So I've taken passengers that have ratings lower than that, and they're just fine. So a lot of times what happens is, you know, it's a new passenger and they had, you know, they had one bad interaction with the driver and the driver was vindictive and gave them a one. Well, you got to get a lot of rides to work that one up to above a 4.6. So um, that happens. Or they had one night drinking, you know, and they were a little unconscious and and, and not great with the driver. Uh, You know, mistakes happen. Uh, So, okay. So that's one way you can tell you got a bad driver by their rating being remarkably low. Next way you can uh, tell somebody is a bad passenger is they are approaching my car with a small child but don't have a car seat. Okay, so this uh, this brings up a whole big issue about what do you do, right? So if you have a passenger that's got a child, and by law they're supposed to have a car seat, but they're going to get into your car and hold the child, what do you do? It's up to each driver to decide what to do. Um, I drive really carefully. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I take everybody in my car and uh, I drive really carefully and it's usually a short ride. Uh, I've never taken any, I I don't know that I would take somebody with a small child if it was like a 20 minute ride, right? If it's just a few blocks, you know, they just need to get home. I would probably do it um, because I'm not breaking the law. The, the, The parents are breaking the law. But it's a, it's a decision every driver needs to make. So they're approaching my car with a small child, but they don't have a car seat. Um, so he says, uh, but if you do something that is out of line, rude and disrespectful, or try to do something illegal, you have just earned yourself four stars or less, right? So uh, so that's, the, that's really the question, right? You can just uh, bite the bullet, drive them, get your five-star rating. Or you can say, no, I cannot drive you, um, in which case they could, you know, make a problem for you. They can make a problem for you. They could lie about you. And this is usually why I tend to just roll with it because it doesn't happen that often and uh, keep driving. Because ultimately, that's my number one goal is to keep driving, not to get deactivated because someone gets angry because I don't give them a ride and they make up a story about me, which did happen to a friend of mine. And he could no longer drive for Lyft, no matter what, whether he was right or wrong. Okay, next reason. All right, so (laughs) these are reasons why, how you can tell somebody's a bad passenger. They have an alcoholic beverage in their hand and try to get in the car with it. So in 26,000 rides, I have never had this happen. 
Um, I don't know if it happens more frequently than that or not. Uh, so they have an alcoholic beverage in their hand and they try to get in the car with it. I guess the question would be, are they drunk, you know, or are they just, uh, you know, getting, going from one party to the next? Um, is that illegal? I don't know if that's illegal for me to drive somebody who has uh, alcohol in their hands. But um, unless they're like drunk and sloshing it around, I don't, I don't see the big problem with that. Okay, they start messaging me or calling me immediately with a very rude attitude. Yes. So here I agree with Clark, the author. Um, when passengers do start messaging me or calling me immediately with a very rude attitude. But again, this doesn't happen. I don't know that this has ever happened. I do get passengers that message me or call me immediately because they want to make sure I know where to pick them up or they're going to walk to a corner that'll save us both some time. Um, any passenger who has a very rude attitude is obviously not gonna be a great passenger. But the fact that they're messaging or calling, calling me uh, immediately is not usually the issue. Uh, it's the attitude that's the issue. And that could apply to somebody once they get in the car, whether they have texted you or called you ahead of time or not. They try to fit more people than are allowed in the car. So this has happened to me uh, one time. And my car holds, I had a Prius, and it holds one, two, three, four passengers. And they squeezed uh, one extra person in the back seat. And, you know, it was just kind of fun. It was a short ride. And again, I went with it because what am I going to do? Am I going to tell five inebriated people you cannot get in my car. What are they going to do? Well, you know, what if they throw a bottle at my car? What if they, again, complain and then I can't drive anymore? So, yep. Um, and it was, they were not terrible passengers. They were fun. You know, they just uh, wanted, to, wanted to get to the next place and they jumped in the car. So I don't really agree with that one. And uh, they don't want to put on their seatbelt after getting in the car. So this has never happened to me. I've never had somebody who said uh, they don't want to put on their seatbelt after getting in the car. Now, this may be more of a thing in like the, the middle of the country uh, or in a state where people, you know, have a little more room and they're used to driving without many cars around. But where I drive in San Francisco, everyone's pretty smart. You know, they realize that putting their seatbelt on is going to save their life if something happens. So everybody puts on their seatbelt. Um, so again, I, I've never had this happen. It feels like a lot of these are put together just to write the article and uh, not necessarily to um, make a point. Okay, next one. They try to change the ride completely or immediately have some ridiculous request. Okay, so this has happened to me a few times where somebody, uh, they kind of trick me by just putting in one destination which isn't too far away. Then once I get in the car, they say, oh, I've just added a second destination. Now we're gonna go you know, 40 miles the other way. Um, that's happened a couple of times. And it doesn't necessarily mean they're a bad passenger. It means they, they realize that the drive that they want is gonna be difficult for, for, to get picked up. So um, I do not like getting tricked. Um, I've never liked that experience. I like if somebody has two stops that they have the two stops listed um, and they don't add a stop while I'm driving. Or passengers will say, do you mind if I add a second stop? And I'll say, sure, well, where are we going? And they'll tell me and I'll go, great. Yeah, that's not a problem. So, um, so that, that's kind of a good point. Um, or immediately has some ridiculous request. So in the, in the article here, it shows a picture of somebody who wants to go through Starbucks. So um, I've, I've had one, if I think back, I've had one passenger and it was when I first was getting started. So I'd been driving for about two weeks and it was New Year's Eve and it was like two in the morning and I picked up these, these four people and they wanted to go through a Mexican food uh, drive through you know, and I was new and I said, sure, what the heck, why not? Um, they were not like, they were just drunk, you know? So I would say, you know, somebody's going to be a 
difficult passenger if they're really drunk, you know, that that's something that I would say. Uh, okay, then the next point, the, the Clark, the author says is, this is again, if how to tell somebody's a bad passenger. They make me wait for them for something unnecessary. Well, unnecessary for me might be necessary for them. It shows somebody who is uh, having a cigarette. So I've never had anybody say, hold on a second while I smoke my cigarette. Uh, if they did, I would just drive away. That's kind of ridiculous. But again, I've never had anybody ever make me wait for something unnecessary. People realize if they do shit like that, they're going to get a low rating, and they don't want a low rating because they want to keep keep using the service. So I've never had anyone say, hold on a second, let me finish my cigarette. Um, but maybe he has. Maybe he has in his part-time first year of driving. Um, and then at the end, he says, at the end of the day, the majority of people are great and the bad passengers are few and far between. Yeah, I've just not had that many bad passengers. I've done 26,000 rides and I can, I can count on my hand the amount that have really just been like rude, you know, very, 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 very small percentage. All right, so that was interesting. Always good to... Uh, Think about, uh, you know, bad passengers. It's always good for a conversation. All right. Um, the New York Times. Uber says 3,045 sexual assaults were reported in the U.S. rides last year. So I did a whole uh, episode on this report. It's just interesting that the, that the focus continues to be on uh, passengers getting assaulted and very little about drivers getting assaulted. And that's all I'm going to say about this. Uh, the report shows that it's about 50-50 when it comes to sexual assaults. Um, although this article interestingly says that uh, of the actual rapes, 92% were uh, drivers uh, assaulting passengers. But when it comes to just general touching, inappropriate touching, kind of sexual assault, it's more like 50-50. All right. So check out that report. It's kind of interesting. Okay, next story. Uh, an Uber office segregated an Uber office segregated bathrooms for drivers and employees. So uh, this is kind of interesting. So somewhere in the United States, somebody who had an Uber office decided to uh, there's a picture here. There's two doors right next to each other. And one door is for drivers and one door is for employees of Uber. Like they need to have separate bathrooms. And, uh, boy, that's just tone deaf, right? Tone deaf. That's just like crazy. Um, this was a mistake and we regret it, said Uber. <laughs> but that kind of tells us a little bit about how Uber thinks of their drivers, right? That that could even happen in 2019 uh, in America is pretty crazy. All right. Good news. Next story. After a rocky rollout, SFO, that's my home airport, moves some Uber airport rides back to the curb. All right. Now, this is only going to apply to you if you have like a premium uh, premium ride, right? Not just uh, UberX, this won't apply to UberX. But if you have like Uber Comfort, um, Uber Select, Uber XL cars, you can now pick up customers at designated curbside spots around the SFO horseshoe. These higher end options cost on average 10 to 15 more than the standard UberX option, um, which you have to go up to the uh, parking garage. So since my car qualifies for Uber Comfort, this means that if I drop somebody off, you know, I pick somebody up in San Francisco, for example, and I drop them off at the airport, it's possible I could get rematched with somebody who uh, requested an Uber Comfort and pick them up, you know, at Terminal 1, 2, or 3, um, or the International Terminal, right? So it hasn't happened yet. It has not happened to me yet because most of my driving has been for Lyft. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do next time I drive is I'm going to be in San Francisco. I'm going to set my destination filter for Uber to the airport. And then I'm going to see what happens and see if I can actually get a rematch ride out of the airport with the Uber Comfort, which um, my car qualifies for. So this is a step in the right direction, but 
for most of us with just regular Uber, it's not going to make any difference. You're still not going to get a ride uh, unless you go to the go to the lot and wait. And I'm not going to wait because it's just a waste of time, in in my humble opinion. But it's a step in the right direction. All right, here we come down to our last story. Okay. Now, I don't know who this woman is. Fans react to Bethany Frankel's Uber driver complaint. So fans usually team Bethany Frankel with the Real Housewives of New York City. So this is some woman who I guess is somewhat famous on TV for being a Real Housewife of New York City. Never watched any of those Real Housewife shows, but I guess some people really like them. So she made a big complaint, I believe on Twitter, about a ride she had in Los Angeles, an Uber ride. And um, what happened was her child wanted to play the ukulele in the car. And the driver said, no, I really don't want to hear your child play the ukulele in the car. And um, it didn't go well. And she complained about it um, on Twitter, and she got a big backlash. Everybody said, no one wants to hear the ukulele in the car, right? And uh, let's see. So she said uh, in Twitter, my Uber driver just charged me $30, told my daughter she couldn't play the ukulele in the car, told us to get out, and that he refunded us, which wasn't true. This sort of thing could land me in prison. I don't know what she means about that last part about land me in prison, but she got a lot of backlash and people said, well, it's his car. He can choose whether he wants to listen to the ukulele or not and, uh, you know, control your child. Why does the child have to play the ukulele, you know, in that Uber ride? So good, good on the public for backlashing this woman and saying, hey, hey, hey. Just because you're in the car doesn't mean you can do whatever the hell you want, right? We drivers have some rights, even if you are some uh, D-list person from the Real Housewives of New York City, whoever she is. All right, that's the news. That's it. So what did we learn today? We learned that audio recording is coming to a town near you pretty soon. It's going to be in your car where... Uber is able to record uh, what happens in your car when passengers are in your car. What else did we learn? We learned that there are eight ways you can tell someone is going to be a bad passenger. All right. We went over those in in great detail. We talked a little bit about the Uber safety report and how it emphasizes uh, passengers getting assaulted, but not drivers. We learned that Uber, once again, shows a little tone deafness when it comes to having bathrooms segregated between drivers and employees. We learned that at the San Francisco airport, some some rides, the more premium rides, are moving away from the garage and back to the curb. Yeah. And we learned that uh, even if you're famous, you can't get away with uh, bullshit. And that's what we saw when... uh, this, uh, I guess it's, she's not really an actress. It's more of a, what do you call it? The, uh, you know, the real, real TV. Um, I forget what's the term. Um, like, like all the shows, reality TV. Yeah. Reality TV performer, um, can't call bullshit on a driver when it's really, uh, everybody's calling bullshit on her for making the complaint because nobody wants to listen to your child play the ukulele in the car. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of news. That's what's going on. That's the latest and greatest as of today, uh, which is uh, Wednesday, December 4th. You guys are awesome. You're my heroes. I love uh, sharing things with you through this medium. Y'all go out and have a great day. You're now uh, on top of the news. And uh, keep working on your plan B. Keep working on your plan B. Get ready for the holidays. Have a great day. Bye-bye for now. Fist bump. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? 
how to do online work you love from anywhere in the world. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily, in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode. And you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I'm really enjoying doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things rideshare dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening and be safe out there.